feel like you're being pulled in a thousand directions? Let's fix that. Download your free rebalancing toolkit and learn how to design an optimized week that lets you feel like you have it all. Get the goods at brilliantbalance.net slash have it all. I'm Sherilyn Skolnicki, and this is Brilliant Balance, the show for working women who are ready to shine. Each week, I bring you ideas, inspiration, and insight on balance, business, and getting it all done gracefully. You ready? Let's be brilliant. This is episode 92 of the Brilliant Balance podcast. And today, we are going to talk about a topic that can be highly emotional. And I am well aware of that. So let's just all agree before we get started to be gentle with ourselves today as we get into this topic. Because what we're talking about today is overcoming infertility. And infertility, I know, is a source of struggle for so many women. It certainly was for me. And it has been both in and out of my coaching practice, something that I have been in dialogue with so many women about. So if you want to think about why we would talk about infertility inside of the Brilliant Balance podcast, I'll just break this down for you and make it really simple. I mean, infertility is one of those issues when you're fighting your way through it that can really create some serious mindset issues, right? What it does is it opens a loop in your mind that can feel totally consuming and out of your control. And so, so much mental energy, so much emotional energy, so much of our time gets poured into trying to solve this problem. And because of that, it can be a real challenge. It can go on for a really long time. And since it can be such a long, drawn out journey, right, the process can go on for years over time it can it can begin to affect so many different areas of your life you know it affects your work and the amount of focus that you can bring the way you show up it can affect your even your attendance and engagement at work massive effect on your home life on your ability to be engaged in anything outside of this particular piece of your life it can have such serious and detrimental effects to your relationships both with your partner and with everyone else around you. And so, you know, when you think about our mission within Brilliant Balance, it really is about helping all women reach their full potential in life. And in order to do that, we have to clear away anything that is standing in the way of you achieving your full potential. And so any kind of open loop issue, right? Any kind of unresolved conflict or struggle or challenge that is siphoning off energy because we don't have a way to get to the other side of it is fair game for the kind of topics that we want to dig into inside of this podcast. So today I am bringing in a guest. I'm bringing Tasha Blasi into the conversation. Tasha is um, an integrative fertility coach. She's a patient advocate And she founded something she calls the FU Project, and it has two separate meanings. And she says that she's the mother to two very expensive children, Hudson, who was a result of IVF number two, and Mila, who is the result of IVF number 10, 10 rounds of IVF. You heard that correctly. So using her background in the sciences, she was actually a biology and chemistry teacher in a previous life. And with the help of tons and tons of experts who she has pulled into her program, she works with women in her practice to create a plan for what you need to do to get pregnant and stay pregnant. And she is very well researched. She is very unfiltered, like you will get it uh, raw and unedited here. And she's really someone that I think can bring extraordinary perspective to anyone in the audience who is either doing IVF or considering IVF or who has been through it in the past um, and or your friends, right? Women in your circle that you think may benefit from this. So the thing that's so extraordinary about 
Tasha is she really didn't know how incredible her work was. I I ran into her in a, a group of entrepreneurs for the first time. And we actually had to convince her (laughs) that the work that she was doing was extraordinary. Here's the thing. Her success rates are very close to 100%. She calls it a 99.5% success rate for those who complete the program. And she guarantees her work. She will continue to work with women until they have a successful outcome. And so it's just that kind of result is extraordinary in a field like this. So she's working in tandem with physician, right, with your physician and with the medical community. But you'll hear her talk about in this interview how her process for coaching women through the fertility process is really much more comprehensive than just the medicine, right? The medicine forms you know, about a third of the process, maybe less than a third, but it's one of three components that she gets into and works through with the women that she supports. So this is a fantastic interview. We cover a lot of ground. We talk specifically about her journey and what got her into this work in the first place. And then we spend a lot of time talking about the process that she takes women through and why it works so well. And then we even get to spend a little time talking about her life as a working mom, and in her case, as a working mom entrepreneur, because I think it's always fascinating for this audience to get a peek behind the curtain on how very successful, very time-starved women make it work. And so Tasha's um, example is a really good one. So I am grateful that she spent some time with me doing this interview. And without further ado, I am going to introduce Tasha Blasey. Tasha, I am so glad to have you here. Hi, I'm so happy to be here, pretty lady. (laughs) I love it when it's somebody who I know personally, these conversations are so rich and like free flowing when I get to connect with a friend. It's awesome. Yes. So first thing I want to do is just dive straight into your personal story because it's so compelling, your own journey with infertility, and then how that became the inspiration for the FU project. I mean, my own journey was absolutely insane. Uh, I call it my, it was like a sadistic boyfriend. But how it happened was we found out that my husband had low sperm count and ended up, and I was fine. Uh, But it ended up that I needed 10 rounds of IVF to have my two very expensive children. So that is the short version of kind of my story with fertility and how it turned into a business was not at all my idea. And I know you can appreciate this. It was a coach. It was, it was a woman like you that was, that was, I was in corporate hell and not, you know, figuring out like why it must be me. It must be me, right? I'm not getting something, though I had been successful in my life. I, I think we all get to a point, especially towards our 40s, because I was 40, uh-huh. where, <laughs> where we, we just, it's not a breaking point, honestly. It's biology. And, and just as a background, and I know, you know, I taught biology chemistry for almost a decade before moving to the West, East Coast and getting into corporate, but it's biology where it just stops. Things stop working. Things stop working. We cannot restore our energy like we used to. That's why I can't drink like I used to, right? I used right. to, I used to get ready to three beers in college. Like if I just sat there getting ready to three beers, I would not be able to go out. That was like me putting on mascara. <laughs> and, and so like, this is because of biology. So we get to this point where I'm like, what's wrong with me? I can't take the stress of being in corporate America in New York City like I used to. And what is wrong? And it was me, me, me. There's something wrong with me. There's nothing wrong. It was, Mm. I was in a toxic environment. I wasn't fulfilled. I wasn't happy. And there was a coach going, hey, I can tell you what you want to be when you grow up. And I was like, yeah, whatever Whatever money it takes, if you really think you can do that, which by the way, I thought was absolutely impossible, I'm in. And, and that's how the FU project, which stands for Fertilitites Unite, and also the real FU, uh, was born. Yes, I love it. So, so you, I'm going to make sure I get this straight. You were in a corporate job working in New York City while you were going through your own 10 rounds of IVF. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. And at the end of that, you have two amazing children. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you had both of the kids before you started the business. Right. Okay. All right. So how long have you been doing this work? So I have been consulting women unofficially on their fertility journey for about nine years. Yeah. Um, officially, I stopped working in corporate and, and decided to take this on uh, for three years. That was, okay. yeah, that so was three years ago. Full-time entrepreneur for three years. And, yes. and this is a question I ask everyone because I know while not all of our listeners are entrepreneurs or even aspire to be, it's kind of endlessly interesting to know what is it that gives someone the courage to mm. make that leap? So, so how did you have the courage to make the leap three years ago to do this full time? So when this opportunity came up, first of all, it didn't make sense to me, a fertility coach that was like, that's weird. Right. Um, but I, I, okay, here's the truth because, okay, here's the truth. Whatever you believe in, God, universe, angels, guides, I'm going to call my angels they kicked me in the ass and gave me a wedgie one day, okay? And what happened was I'm SVP of sales and marketing at a media company in New York City, and I'm, I'm miserable. I go to this woman, this coach. She gives me a, the idea for, the, for a fertility coach. And six days later, my entire division was shut down. Unbelievable. And my position and was eliminated. It didn't exist going forward. So. What gave me, like, I, I, honestly, it was listening to, to what's right in, in whatever you believe in. It's understanding there is something out there that, that definitely is smarter than you. There is something out there that has your best interest in mind. And if you can just stop and listen, yeah. you will get that message. Like somebody, whenever people run into me accidentally – and they're like, oh my gosh, it's a fertility. That's not an accident. If, if somebody sees your, your website or listens to your podcast and gets this like rush of like, wow, that's amazing. That's not a coincidence. That's not an accident. That's not a bout of insanity for a second. You know? right. Right. That woman telling me that I should be a fertility coach sounded crazy. And then it was like the floodgates opened. I thought of the name. I, all these people all of a sudden came out of the woodworks and it was just so right. But I don't know if I had the guts to, to, to leave that very cushy job to do it. Right. But, but when I got a, a, a kick in the ass, I listened. Yes. Yeah. And you it's know, like, I, I love the sequencing of the seed gets planted and you're like, yeah. I'm not doing that, right? It's almost like the hero's journey. And yeah. then, the, then the stimulus comes in and you're like, okay, wait a minute. Now there's like this double sign. And I think that's why I got the first signal. Like it clarifies right. the first signal. Um, but you still have to follow it. You still have to yeah. say, all right, I'm going to do this. Right. Because I could have gone the next day and got another job. Exactly. Exactly. But instead it was like, okay, I'm listening. This all right. My time. <laughs> I love it. So now here you are three years later, three years mm -hmm. into this being your full-time work. And I want to get into a little bit like, what is the work? What is it that you do with women when you are fertility coaching them? So let's start here. I want you to tell them about what is the state that women are like typically in when they find their way to you? Typically, I wish this was a little different, but typically they have already had multiple failed rounds of IVF, multiple miscarriages, whether fertility treatments or natural. And they really just don't have much hope. I say that I'd like that to be different because like with anything else, if, if, if they can come to me before they start, <laughs> you know, it just makes it go so much faster. Sure. Um, and, you know, uh, undoing problems can, can sometimes, one, be impossible. I've had that happen. But we still work through those where, where it's like somebody's like, I can't move clinics. I bought three rounds of IVF. And I'm like, Ooh. right. I right. can still work through that. Right. But that's what I mean. It's, it's, that's when they typically come to me when nothing is working. The doctor is basically saying, I'm doing the best I can. You probably need egg donor or you need surrogate or you just yes. need to adopt. Yes. Is, that's absolutely not 
the truth, that's when they typically come to me. You know, what's interesting as you say that is, I think that's probably the case for all kinds of coaching, right? It's yeah. like we don't go until we're in so much pain and there's so <laughs> many problems that we're like, I have no other choice. And all of those coaches, whatever they're good at teaching you how to do, are like, if you would have come sooner, yeah. <laughs> we could yeah. have avoided a lot of pain in the that's interim right. here. But it's, it's almost like um, the pain threshold has to get high enough right. before we're willing to really seek coaching. And, you know, interestingly, in, in your area of expertise, I think the first step that women get coached to do when they have any kind of infertility is good to go to a clinic, right? So they're going to start right. with a clinic or a physician, um, not a coach. Right. Right. And they get referred by their gyno and they're like, she's a doctor too. Of course she knows. Exactly. And it's this one, this is the one I have to go to. So then when women do cross paths with you, right. And they, they're, they're feeling defeated because they've been down this path for a while and it's not working. What do you do first? Where do you start with them? Uh, The first thing that we do is get clarity on their journey. I think that's, that's, that's not everything, but that's a big part of it. So that's the, what I call the science. And if, if it's not clear what needs to be your immediate next steps with the science, I think it's really hard to continue to move forward. Because when, when I set up, that's like one of the first calls we do, other than here, you know, here we are, like, welcome, we love you. It's a call with me. And we set up that journey and I give like this outline of exactly what information we don't know. That's a big one. A lot of these women are going forward. Their doctors are telling them, up, oh, you absolutely need IVF or up, oh, you absolutely need this without a lot of information going right. forward. So it's what information do we need to go forward or, and what are your immediate next steps? That's kind of how it goes. So it's, it's an outline of the journey. Mm. So it's like a process line. Like here's our, you know, A, then B, then C, we're going to go in this order. And, you know, I always, I always love the, the, is it the Hippocratic oath of first do no harm? Like I think about you thinking like, what's the least invasive, least, what's the simplest thing we could do first before we kind of amp up the other measures you could ask people to take? Right. Yeah. The amount of women that, I mean, it's, it's typically people do need IVF if, if they're working with me, but I've had people say, I'm being told I need IVF, so I want to do it the best way. That's why I'm working with you. And I'm, I've said to them, I don't think you need IVF yet uh, because nothing about, you know, just because they can't figure it out doesn't mean you need it. That being said, we're going to create a map for you mm-hmm. because where are you mentally? Where are you financially? It's, it's always usually emotional energy that, that we need to be most careful with. But yeah, it's, I've, I've definitely had people come to me saying, this is what I need to do. And I'm able to, to take them back a few steps and say, no, you actually have other, other choices. That's amazing. It's amazing. And, and I know we shared this in your intro, but what's really amazing is your success rate. I mean, 99.5% of the people who work with you go on to have a baby. Right? Yeah. And, and technically... So, so it really is a 100% success rate for anybody who finishes the program. And now I'm putting that caveat in because I have had some situations where it's like somebody, somebody worked with me for one egg retrieval and then like took her dream job. And I was like, well, does that, that doesn't count to us <laughs> or, or like somebody else, you know, had an embryo that was not good quality. And she's like, I'm going to put this in and then start over. I was like, great. She put it in. She's like, okay, I'm done. You know? And so I, I say, I say it's 99.5% for a couple of reasons. One, 100% is very intimidating. And I actually have women coming to me going, I don't want to be your first fail. Oh, interesting. Yes. Yes. I have that. I have that a lot. And I always say that's impossible, but right. like, let's, let's keep on going. And, and then people are like, oh, cause you make everyone do egg donor and surrogate. No, absolutely not. You're never going to hear me say you need an egg donor or surrogate. If you need one, I'll help you. But yeah, it's intimidating. And also, yeah, but for, for the people that have finished the program, which now I just, I, I identify as you do the full steps of science, decluttering, and mindset work. And then you give me a couple chances, right? So it's my work because, you know, if you come to me with the work done, I don't consider that my work anymore. Um, I used to take responsibility for that as well, but 
yeah, it's, it's my work and yeah, it's always, it is a hundred percent success rate. So why? I think the reason why is because it's the best of, well, first of all, people don't realize it is those three things, Mm -hmm. science, decluttering and mindset. Um, the other ways I, I, I've reframed those is science, um, space to make a baby and energy to make a baby. But all those kind of go together. Most people just focus on the science and the science is based on one clinic's protocol. So not only are people not focusing on those three things, but the one thing they're focusing on, there is a very narrow view of it. And the advice that they're getting is is very small. So I work with women around the world. We're in like eight countries right now. And I see the best practices around the world. And, and so I'm able to say, based on, like, I get that's their protocol. That's probably not going to work for you. And this is why. So let's ask your doctor these questions. So that's, I think, where the success rate comes in. What I focus on, the three things, and then I don't follow one protocol. I love this emphasis on decluttering your word and space, right? Mm-hmm. The, the notion that that it's not just the science in a vacuum. It's environmentally what is going on around the science. That's mm-hmm. how I'm interpreting it. So unpack that piece a little bit more, the, this decluttering and space element. Yeah, this is, this is probably my, my favorite thing. Decluttering, it is about making space in the body and mind for anything to grow. So this can go across many different disciplines, but just speaking with fertility, if, if you have so, you know, and I'm not just talking about nutrition, though we, we, def, we definitely deal with that, but if you have so much clutter, and, and I, I say five, use your five senses. Here's a quick exercise. Use your five senses. And for a week, write out all the things that come into your senses and how it makes you feel. And if it is something that brings your energy down, drains you, you need to figure out one, how to remove it or create boundaries around it. Okay. So, so often we are inundated with all of these, you know, ingesting from every sense yes. these things and they're just happening to us and we're allowing them in instead of then they, they come in, right? There's a lot we can't control, but then how do we process that and get rid of the trash and create space for the healthy thoughts, for the positive energy and things that are coming in. Um, and, and this isn't woo-woo, woo-woo stuff. This is science. So if, if you don't, if you are cluttered, okay, and your senses are cluttered and there is actually toxic toxicity happening in your body due to how you are processing this information, which absolutely tells your body how to respond, okay? That is all science and that will absolutely affect it. Kind of bigger picture is if you're constantly inundated with other people's junk and stuff or your own junk and stuff or, oh my gosh, clutter from your past. Talk about the biggest space and energy and time waster is focusing on and holding onto and allowing your past to hold you down. That is a huge, huge issue. Getting rid of all that would just, it just, it creates freedom. Yeah, so it's freedom. opening up, right? Like I yeah. just, your space word is so good. It's like, there has to be space. There has to be space to create. Yeah. Create Amazing. whatever you want. Create the life of your dreams. Yeah. Yeah. When you said this is science, I was thinking back to your reference to, you know, you were a biology and a chemistry teacher. Like you're deeply grounded in science and it would be, it would be easy for people to listen to you because you're so fun. Right. And, and think of you as like, you know, this is more frivolous, right? This has a whimsical, I think that it's deeply grounded in science, all the work you're doing. But there's a lightness to it because, my God, the whole industry is so heavy. You know, like we have yeah. to have a little bit of lightness. As, as you all who are listening get familiar with Tasha's work, like you will find she is the, one of the funniest women I have ever <laughs> met and has a, a terrible potty mouth. So you just <laughs> know, have to be prepared. I, I feel like it. we should put a disclaimer on, like she's being very good and, and you'll I mean, continue so to good. be good. <laughs> but, be, but be prepared when you uh, are in Tasha's realm and on her yes. site. But I think there's a lightness to it, right? And that is really important that we can like not take everything so seriously. Yeah. 
Okay, ladies, who's ready for two days of big ideas and fun experiences with a group of extraordinary women? We've put together a high energy venue and a girlfriend getaway vibe just for you. If that sounds like your idea of a good time, then please join me at our next Brilliant Balance Live. It's in Cincinnati on September 26th and 27th, 2019. And tickets are on sale now at CherylAnnSchoolNikki.com forward slash live. Come learn how to chase your biggest professional dreams, raise a thriving family, and still fiercely protect breathing room just for yourself. I'm going to help you find a new rhythm for getting things done, one that keeps you focused, energized, and fully engaged. Your life, it's about to get a major upgrade. Get your tickets today. The link is in the show notes. So it, it's a to me, it's a really nice balance because of the the gravity of the subject matter, you know, that you're dealing with every day. Yeah. So that's amazing. The process is effective because it goes beyond the science. So much of what the physicians might come at is just the science, and you're surrounding it with this other work that's giving the science its best chance to be effective. Yeah. Well, your uterus and your ovaries, I mean, don't work in a vacuum. I mean, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. I've, I've, I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> When, when people are like, it's just, you know, and, and here's the thing, you should just use the fertility doctors for what they do with the uterus and ovaries and, and, you know, use the embryologist for what they do with fertilization and growing. And, but if you think that your, your ability, your reproductive system is simply your uterus and ovaries and the functionality of them, it just has to do with that. Like that's a huge miss. It's not a mind body experience. It's they're all connected and they're constantly working back and forth and back and forth. So whatever your sensations are, right? That's where the ingestion of senses come in. It will trigger your brain on how to respond, which will trigger your endocrine system, all of your hormones in a good way or in a destructive way. It's amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you know, I think anyone fine. listening can go, gosh, that makes so much sense. But I know so many of the women who are elbow deep in this battle, right, with infertility are not. They're just reading every piece of science about every extra science-based, medical-based mm-hmm. approach that they can take. And so I think my encouragement and the reason I wanted to do this episode is about widening the scope, right? Pull back the lens, look at a bigger picture because it's taking so much headspace and yet most people are trying to solve it so myopically. But, but if you pull back the lens and say, look, there's a bigger equation here that can be solved, maybe that's where your answer lies right? In one of those other areas. So I love that. And I'm so glad. Yeah. And, and I would also challenge people because I do think they, they look for answers everywhere they can. They are, I mean, oh, I read, what is it? Starts with an egg and I'm doing the circle and bloom meditation. And I, I mean, just so everybody knows, everybody comes to me with that <laughs> arsenal <laughs> of everything that they can digest, ingest online. The key with that is I'm not saying any of those are, are, are bad, and I've never read It Begins With an Egg, but every single one of my clients has. But you also have to understand that you're just grasping for some information, and because this is biology, you need somebody to work on your specific case. For, for 90% of the decluttering process or 90% of the mindset work, yeah, it's, it's going to look similar, but then there's... I, you should never look at what somebody else's protocol is, what somebody else's, how they got successful, because that could be very expensive, very dangerous and very expensive for you to say, hey, so-and-so did this, I should try it. And I see people give advice, <laughs> even on my own posts, you sure. know, people go back and forth and it's just really scary when, when we're just people are just grasping for answers really and they and they will do everything and yeah. they're well intentioned like yeah. i think all of us I, I mean i remember in my own journey it was like you just feel like it's your responsibility to read everything you can get your hands on and to and whether it's infertility or other areas where we're struggling right we're like okay i'm going to diy my way through this i'm going to really <laughs> just read everything i can and I think that goes back to our discussion at the beginning. You can avoid a lot of pain if you're at least in consult with an expert 
earlier on in whatever the the painful journey is that you're engaged in, right? In this case, infertility. Right. I'm curious, Tasha, are there a few things that you would want any woman going through IVF um, specifically or infertility more generally to know? Like what are like a few principles or things you would want all of them to know? I mean, the first one would be that it is the, it's the, it's the science, it's the decluttering, it's, it's the mindset that all, that are all based on science and your biology that will help you create a baby. So I think that's, that's one of the biggest things that, that people need to know. The other thing is to understand, and this is, I mean, I don't hesitate to say this because it's really important to say, but your doctor works for a business. Okay. And, and I'm not saying that all these doctors are just scumbags trying to make a buck. What I'm saying is there might be some decisions made, some protocols that are best for their business and not necessarily best for you. So when you deal with a very protocol driven clinic or doctor, or you keep on getting, you know, this is just how it goes this, and it's not working, I would move on. I would really move on from that because just like in any business, the second that you're not going to be profitable to them or you're a liability, they're not going to take your case anymore. At some point, you're not worth the money anymore because you're ruining their stats. Well, why are you ruining their stats? Well, because probably because of the protocol and it's the only protocol that they know that they can't get off of. So, so that's the other thing when not realizing that there are dozens of protocols that work and your doctor is going to choose the one that, that is good for you, but also good for the clinic. And, and, and people rate those differently. Some do clinic first and some do client second. I think those are, those are pretty big ones. You know, I think another big thing I would love for everyone to realize is, is everybody's role in, in this journey a lot of my clients have really unrealistic expectations of what support should look like from their, their partners, from their friends, from their, their family, and, and allowing you know, yourself to understand you might have unrealistic expectations of what these people are capable of doing. Maybe because you're in so much pain at yeah. that point, right? Like emotionally, it's so all-consuming that it's, it becomes like, center of the universe, everybody needs to be here for me. But that's like, to your, to your point, that's a lot to ask of some of those players in the, in the drama, right? Right. And, and because, because women going through this are typically looking for answers, they're going to look for it anywhere. And if somebody's not supporting them correctly, it's very upsetting. But that being said, even she doesn't know how to get through this correctly and, and so for her to have these expectations that her partner should or her mom or friends should say the right thing or do the right thing, it's just unrealistic and, and a little unfair. I understand why I was there 10 <laughs> times. But that being said, it's, you know, be careful what you expect from people and, and the support that you expect to get or, or what you say. Because even if somebody has gone through a miscarriage or fertility journey, they're still not equipped to properly show you how to get through it. And, and along those lines, I would add, do not let anybody else on their fertility journey support you on your fertility journey. Like, it's one thing to just kind of laugh about it once in a while. I do. I find, I find humor in everything, um, you know. But it's, it's when, when, when I see, like, oh, and I might, be, I might be offending people right now, but when I see those IVF support groups on Facebook, those are horrible. They are so energetically draining. They are so not helpful. Everybody's grasping for an answer. Everyone's trying to be an expert in something they have absolutely should not be talking about because, again, science advice is very expensive. Free advice is very expensive. Um, so, yeah, it's it's... That's another big thing is do, do not try to get support from somebody else going through a journey. First of all, somebody's going to win. 
and then somebody's less behind. And secondly, even if they're done with their journey, it doesn't mean they were trained in how to best guide you. Because I'm talking about best practices in the science of fertility. Right. It's like, it feels like there's a role to play for people to be your friend or, and, and to love you and to be supportive of you, but they're clearly not in the position to be offering advice, right? right. Like, and that's the line where I think having an expert um, like you or like their physician, those are the people who need to be there to provide advice, right? And that yeah. kind of form the core team. So I want to... Um, I want to, we'll talk in a little bit about how to get people in touch with you, but let's just hit it quickly here. So if somebody is like sitting here feeling very tingly, like you are the answer to a prayer and what they have been looking for, how, what is the best place for them to go to reach you, to find you? I mean, the first, I would just say my website, TashaBlasi.com. I think the first thing is to just gather as much information that can help you as possible you know, definitely my podcast, I give a lot of coaching and, and advice on my podcast. And, and in some of it's, you know, a lot of people ask about what do I say when people, you know, say stupid stuff. I have a whole podcast on, on how to answer appropriately as well as inappropriately when people ask <laughs> inappropriate questions. So yeah, I would, I would say go to my podcast for a lot of advice go to my website for a lot of advice and information. Um, awesome. And that's really the first place to start. And if it is something where it's like, okay, this, this, this makes sense, this resonates with me, I want to I wanna learn more, then there's a place to contact us. Perfect. So I will link those up in the show notes. We'll have the link to your site as well as the podcast and then like your other social platforms if they want to find you there too. Yeah. And the, the next kind of thing I want to make sure we talk about is, you know, virtually everyone who listens to this podcast is a working mom. Not, you know, it's not a hundred percent, but for the most part, that's like our core audience. So, you know, as a working mom in your life as an entrepreneur and a mom and a wife, like I want to have a little bit of a dialogue about how you structure your day or your week um, so that you have space for your business and for your family and for yourself. Okay. So tell us a little bit about how you do it. What are some of the practices that you implement to really keep those three things um, operating in tandem? Yeah, that is a work in progress, Cheryl Ann. <laughs> I mean, I, I am the ultimate. I, I, I'm, much, I'm much better now because I am truly a work in progress and I'm constantly learning and, and growing or else you, I'm dead, right? So what's the point? Exactly. Um, <laughs> Uh, I would, so, so I've always had the mom guilt, right? I'm not doing enough for my kids. I can always be working more in my business. I've always had that. What the, the key that I have learned is to schedule and to block my schedule. So a lot of people have access to my calendar. My team has access to my calendar. I have to block out things like right now I have lunch and walk at 1230 every day. I block an hour so that I can eat and take a walk because I will sit at my desk for all day long, just writing and talking and writing and talking. And nobody can block that time, 1230 to 130. I also block when I meditate. I also block plan and prepare so that I have this block of time yes. for the next day to plan and prepare. So for me, it's about scheduling, planning, and preparing. And, and what I'm bad with, which I should probably work with you on, <laughs> is <laughs> when, I, when I don't, right, what's the consequence? Because right now, I, I, I think that's a big miss with me. I don't have consequences for not taking time for myself or not stopping work right at, call it 5.30, I try, you know, things like that. Yeah. Well, you don't have self-imposed consequences, right? There are right. consequences. They're just not big, big and ugly enough to keep you from breaking those habits. Exactly. I have too yeah. many people that like are, are allowing me to not fall. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I love, I mean, look, you're doing a lot of things right, right? So the notion of saying I, what gets scheduled gets done. So I'm using time blocking to yeah. get the most important things in there. Having a planning and preparing block, like plan yeah. and prepare as a standing block is huge having time for movement and for yourself and to eat, like to honor that you're a human, right? <laughs> and then the, the I, because I'm telling you, working moms forget we are human. We like yeah. think we're a robot. 
Um, and meditation is just such fabulous. We just had Brenda Via on a, a while back and she was talking about meditation and it's just such a power practice, right? So not surprising to me that those are some of the priorities that you fit in there. How much do you work? What is, are you working? Like how many hours a week would you say you're working? I, I don't count. I definitely, I, I keep my schedule open Monday through Saturday. Saturdays, I keep 10 to 1 open. What I'm trying to do with that is wrap up, right? Any loose ends, wrapping up. During the week, I, I tend to work a couple days a week. I keep my morning open for a workout. Uh, so I really try not to work past six. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say, you know, it's not like I, I wake up, I'm with the kids. That's, that's, you know, that's, I, I'm, I'm, I do a little meditation. I do a little movement stretches and then I'm, and then I'm, I'm with the kids. I get more of that in depending on who wakes me up and at what time, yes. you know, <laughs> right. but yeah. And then, and then it's, and then I'm just working all day with that break. Um, until, like I said, I, I do my planning and preparing around four thirty, and then I tie loose ends and. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's not like an exact science. I just, yeah, I, I try to be done by like five, five thirty, And I, and I start working around depending on the day, nine, sometimes 10 30. That's part of what I love though. I think, again, I like to give women very practical sort of behind the scenes glimpses of how people are doing this at a high level, because if there's a false expectation out there that there's a rigidity, you know, and you are like up and out the door and in an office at six and you're there until 6.30 and, you know, that's wrong. It's also wrong to think that you're doing this like with a baby on one hip and a toddler on the other in two hours a day, right? Yeah. Like it's a full-time job to run a practice like this. So I think it's, right. I'm just really passionate about giving people a real world impression of what does it look like to run a substantial entrepreneurial venture while raising children. And, you know, I like that you have some fluidity around it, but principles, right? The principles are I go to the kids first and I get in when I can. And ideally it's by nine and ideally I'm done by five or five 30, but sometimes it goes a little later. Like it's still, it's principled um, on the front and the back end. So you got to give yourself some credit for that. Thanks. Yeah. And, (laughs) and I would say, you know, around that it's, it's also knowing, and maybe this is a different topic, but I've also gotten really good at one, you, you have to make time for yourself, right? <laughs> Amen. I say I'm, good at, I'm saying I'm good at it, but then you'll laugh because the other day I was like, I'm going to go to the movies at 3.30 on a Friday, right? Because yeah. that's really not skipping work. It's 3.30 on a Friday. But I was like, I'm going to go see Rocket Man with my friend. Leading up to 3.30, I had like anxiety. I was like, oh, there's so many other things I should be doing. But I went to the movies. I ordered a vodka soda. For you. And at three, <laughs> watch my movie and had a blast. So yeah, I'm trying to do more of those things. I'm trying to have no call days, right? Maybe yes. I think Wednesdays could be that. Yes. I, I'm trying to have those times. Yeah. I mean, that's so, first of all, the 330 movie with a vodka soda is a great example, of, <laughs> right? Like, I think we have this secret desire to be bad and it's like, you've got to, it has to come out somewhere. So there it is, right? This is like your little very safe way of acting out and feeling like you're getting away with something, but it's so healthy because then, you know, you're taking it out of the work day. Like people are often delaying me time until the very, very end of the day when they're like at the dregs of their energy. And I am forever encouraging women, like figure out how to get a little me time during the day so that one, you actually enjoy it, right? You're not falling asleep. And two, you know, you're the evening then that very late evening when we're dead can just yeah. like little dumb stuff that we could do with our eyes half closed. Like right. don't try to do anything super fun then because you, you don't have any energy left. No, in the day. And, and I think a big, a big thing that I want to bring up there, which is we, we are doing great. I'm doing great. Okay. So what am I, like, what am I trying to prove? Right. Right. So as long as I do have these principles in place and, and as long as I see my children every morning before they go to camp now, cause it's summer camp, you know, or school. And, and as long as at night I'm there with them and I, I'm doing great. And with my business, I think it's just our personality is, yeah, I could always be doing more. But at what point do I just want to say, hey, 
my end goal is a feeling. And this is the feeling that, it, that it's going to be with my kids. And this is the feeling that it's going to be with my business. And for me, money has nothing to do with this feeling. And so at some point, I just have to say, like, why are you doing this? I know why I'm doing it. It's my passion. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I would do it all day long, no matter what. Yeah. Um, I do love it. And, and I'm doing enough. And I just, I think reminding ourselves of what is our goal and are we doing, are we just growing? Are we doing something? Then it's enough. And, and have that extra time. We're not on this race to get to this end, you know, this sprint, like slow down. It's okay. You no, know, I, I, I love what you're saying. It's, I was telling my team recently, like we're playing a long game. You know, this isn't like a 50 yard dash to see like, okay, we're all going to be exhausted at the end of it. And then we can't get up and run. Like you, you're yeah. playing a long game here. So it's, it should have a cadence. It should have breaks. It's okay to take a day off or a morning off or like, you know, we have to mm -hmm. give ourselves that we're not in some kind of a dead sprint all the time, but especially for entrepreneurs, I think that can be tricky and you've articulated it really well, really well. Yeah. And something else that I noticed or, or I, we got, um, people love to do like personality tests on me, right? So every personality test comes up, I'm an achiever, I'm an achiever. And that's, that you might be like, oh my gosh, that's so great. Like I felt really proud of myself that I'm an achiever. However, for me, if I don't accomplish something, then I don't feel like worthy. Like I didn't, I, what's the point of the day if I didn't accomplish something? And that's a problem, right? So as a, as a, <laughs> achiever, <laughs> as a diagnosed achiever, I am now trying to sit in not achieving and being comfortable with that. And the more that I do that, the more comfortable I will be and the more balanced I will be. Exactly. Because if I am not balanced and all I'm doing is achieving, achieving, like that's, that's not fun. So I did this whole pod. No, I didn't. It was a podcast. It was very dirty. It was a, it was a group call. <laughs> called the two other F words in our fertility journey, which is fun and effing, right? But I use the real word. I'm being very nice in your podcast. Thank and you. I was like, why aren't we having fun? And why did you stop effing your partner? So we did this whole thing where, where and, and I was, and I took that, I took that on myself and I'm like, I'm going to have more fun and yeah. I'm going to do my husband more. Done. You I, I love how aligned you are with your brand. It is, it, it, it could not be my brand. I love that it is yours. <laughs> I love it. All right, Tasha, yeah. I have some speed round questions okay. for you. I did not prepare for these. So okay, okay. Well, good. I like it yeah. when they're spontaneous. So there are five of them. And uh, first thing that comes to your mind. So the first one is what makes you feel brilliant? Brilliant is, what, what makes me feel brilliant is making somebody laugh. Awesome. What is your favorite time-saving or productivity hack? Hiring somebody, especially coaches. I have a coach for everything. What have you learned to say no to? Energy suckers. People who I just get a text from them and I automatically, every bit of life drains out of me. What's one dream that you're chasing these days? Disrupt the fertility industry. What's the song that you turn on when you need to get in the zone? <laughs> um, <laughs> I love I love like awesome Broadway like great, greatest showman and you turn that on and you I'm doing high kicks I'm like yeah <laughs> I love it <laughs> this I is love the greatest it. show yeah I get awesome like, Broadway <laughs> fabulous you are so fun my friend thank you for being with us today it is always a good time to be oh. around you Thanks for love having it. me. And, and I love what you do. And let me just tell you, I need to tell you a story that I never told you. And for anybody listening, like if, if you have an opportunity and I'm not just kissing your ass for any reason, like, please, <laughs> <laughs> there's absolutely no reason for that. But the amount of us women that do not put our self fulfillment and happiness first is completely insane. I've had conversations about you, Cheryl Ann. I remember one conversation in particular. This woman was drowning. I literally saw her head underwater, figuratively, <laughs> drowning, just had a baby, trying to do this. We are at our country club, okay? 
We're, and she is drowning and she has no sense of self. She has no sense of what she wants to be when she grows up. She's no, and I was like, you need to talk to my friend, Cheryl Ann. She is, I, I'm not going to swear. She is amazingly brilliant. <laughs> and, and you know what she said? She was like, oh, I can't spend money on that. And I was like, mm, I'm pretty sure the cost of your husband's country club every month is basically <laughs> going to change your life. And really, like, like he can go get his caddies and carts, whatever they do. I don't even know what they do. Yeah. And like, but you can't invest in the rest of your amazing, fulfilled life, and you actually get an opportunity. So I don't know why I went on this tangent, but my point is you are doing such great work for these women, and I really encourage anybody listening that's like, oh, I don't know if I should spend the money. Oh, my God. This is the best money that you could spend, which is if no, if I didn't have a coach say, hey, I know what you could be when you grow up and I didn't pay her and listen and then continue to pay people until I got to where I am and I continue, I'm working with Tony right now, you know, Tony, mm -hmm. paying him a ton of money to figure out systems in my business. Like, don't figure on your own, put yourself first, invest in yourself. Who cares about your retirement and IRA? Like invest in yourself now. <laughs> I say do both. I say do both. Yeah, I, I appreciate you saying that because I think the the mindset of my kids are worth sending to the very best camp or the very best school. You know, my husband is worth being able to pursue his passions and hobbies, but I it is it is not I am not worthy of investing in really learning the tools, right? Getting the playbook on how am I going to establish the life that allows me to be productive and allows me to be energized and allows me to really explore all the possibilities is it takes, you know, somebody has to have their first experience. Like you had your first experience with a coach where that got opened up to you yeah. and all of a sudden you're a believer and now you're like, look, that's my shortcut for everything. I'm going to okay. go find an expert and they're going to get me there faster. Yeah. But I do think there's a whole um, there is that like first time experience of, I mean, I had a ton of resistance to engaging uh, uh, my first coach or mentor or support. Like I just did not, I thought I was way smarter than that. I really yeah, thought I was yeah, like yeah. going to be able to figure it out on my own. So yeah. once, once you kind of understand that it's this massive accelerator in what, and that there probably is someone who can help you in virtually any big transformation you want to make or problem you want to solve, like it's a game changer, right? But yeah. I think we've got to cross over first. Like, are we worth it? You know, so you, I, I appreciate uh, your comments about that yeah. a lot. Yeah, and, and, and take a deeper dive into why you, it, it might be hero mentality. It might be fear that, that I can't do it, you know. So take a deeper dive and, and, and put that fear aside and, and jump in and see what happens. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. I understand you have a special resource for our listeners. So we're going to link them up to these top 15 questions to ask a new fertility clinic that mm -hmm. you are exploring. Um, we'll put that link in show notes as well. And then again, you can find Tasha at her website. It's tashablasi.com and also via her podcast, which we will link in the show notes. So thank you again for being with us today. It has been so You're fun. Welcome. You're welcome, love. Keep being brilliant and doing what you do. All right. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> Tasha's one of those people who is just inspiring in the lives that she's changing with her work, but also just the way that she's able to keep such an upbeat spirit about such a serious issue. So I hope that it was helpful for many, many women listening today to hear her perspective. And I really hope that you'll think of someone, maybe not even today, but someday. You'll cross paths with someone that you know needs to hear this message, and you'll know where to go back to find it and put it into their hands at exactly the right time. So a couple things before I close out for today. Let me make sure that you know where to connect with my community online. If you are not already with us, we are in Facebook. There is a Brilliant Balance Facebook group. It is an amazing group of women. This is where the tribe has assembled. So if you are loving the podcast and you want to be part of a dialogue with other women who are a lot like you working through these exact same questions and challenges and ideas, um, and you want to do it together, the group is a fabulous place to do that. So just go into Facebook, go to groups, search for Brilliant Balance, join us, and uh, we will welcome you right into the group. If you want to follow along on Instagram, there's two places to do that. 
My personal account is at C Skolnicki, and the company's account is Brilliant underscore Balance. Two different perspectives on all things Brilliant Balance. So I look forward to connecting with you online in one of those spaces. Next time when we are together, I am going to do something that I have been asked to do a lot over the last weeks, and that is to share some perspective about the vacation that I took this summer with our children. Lots of you have followed along on social media. We took about a 10-day trip to three different countries in Europe with the kids, and um, I got a lot of questions about how we did that and how we put it together and planned, and I am going to share some of that perspective in case it's something that you would like to put on your radar for an upcoming vacation. So it's going to be lots of fun, and I look forward to sharing about that with you next week. Till next time, my friends, let's be brilliant. Okay, ladies, who's ready for two days of big ideas and fun experiences with a group of extraordinary women? We've put together a high energy venue and a girlfriend getaway vibe just for you. If that sounds like your idea of a good time, then please join me at our next Brilliant Balance Live. It's in Cincinnati on September 26th and 27th, 2019. And tickets are on sale now at CherylAnnSchoolNikki.com forward slash live. Come learn how to chase your biggest professional dreams, raise a thriving family, and still fiercely protect breathing room just for yourself. I'm going to help you find a new rhythm for getting things done, one that keeps you focused, energized, and fully engaged. Your life, it's about to get a major upgrade. Get your tickets today. The link is in the show notes. This is the podcastfactory.com.